Hello and welcome to Animal Watch and this week we're diving with sharks in the Caribbean with Christina Donato. My name is Annika Svenska and I have filmed one of the world's most feared apex predator, the wolf, all over the world. Today I will be trading land for sea and stepping into the great underwater unknown of top apex predator, the shark. I will be joining shark conservationist Christina Zanato as she feeds them and also I'll be getting hands-on with a hypnotised shark. Will I survive? Watch to find out. Into the great unknown. Sharks. We see them, we know them, we fear them. But why? TV, films, the media. Jaws the movie had millions of people flocking to cinemas the world over. It set us all into a huge panic, resulting in billions of sharks ruthlessly slaughtered over the next few years by vigilantes hoping to save us oh-so-vulnerable humans from the toothy menace in the depths. However, every year, a shocking 100 million sharks are killed by humans for shark fin soup or simply out of fear for what they represent. When in fact, just six humans die from shark bites a year. Humans by far are the deadlier and more dangerous of the species, with our fears driving hunting, resulting in shark numbers plummeting into a desperate and deadly downward spiral. Is our perception of sharks accurate? Or perhaps are they actually different to what the movies portray? I'm sympathetic after watching the Grey's horrific portrayal of man-eating wolves. We all know that Hollywood films have a lot to answer for in the horrific and unfair portrayal of the true nature of many of our predators. Today I am diving to the bottom of the ocean in the Bahamas with world-famous shark conservationist, expert and star of BBC Blue Planet Lives Christina Zanato, known for her magical underwater interactions where she has sharks literally sleeping in her arms, as well as removing painful fishing hooks from their delicate mouths and educating the public about the real dangers sharks face from us humans. If anyone can shed light on the real side of sharks, then she's the one. To do this, we have travelled to Freeport in Grand Bahama, one of the most beautiful parts of the world with its vibrant island life, and also the clearest waters, teeming with thousands upon thousands of sharks. We filmed this episode two weeks before Hurricane Dorian devastated Grand Bahamas and the Abaco Islands in September 2019. So although we were lucky to have escaped in time, Christina and her comrades spent months clearing up the devastation this hurricane wrecked on both local island people's lives and also the environment and wildlife. We arrive at the marina. The day is beautiful and the water clear. We board the boat and head on out to a dive site that Christina is familiar with. Christina has worked with this set of Caribbean reef sharks for 25 years now, getting to know each individual, their character, and regularly removing fishing hooks from their mouths, which takes some skill and has earned her her amazing reputation in shark care and conservation. These are parts of the part of the hooks that I've been removing for over 15 years. Those people that say, oh, but the hooks will eventually rust. 
would you leave something like that in yourself? No, you or, wouldn't, especially if it's going to rust. And it's like, no. now I don't want it to rust. I, I want it to remove it. I want to ease their pain. These are some of the most dangerous ones to remove. That one's nasty. Because one may be in the mouth and the other one are dangling outside and I can get stuck in it. We arrive at the dive site and Christina explains to us about what is to happen. I'll be basically walking right in front of you. The sharks know what we're doing. They'll be circling around me. I use the food obviously to attract the sharks, but also to uh, reward the sharks, like we would do with any kind of animal. If they let me, I have few females that I've known for over 10 years, so some of them up to 13 years, and they tend to come into my stomach and allow me to pet them. If she's nice and relaxed, it might take me a few minutes, I'll pick her up and just bring her right in front of you. And then once you have it in front of you, you can just gently touch her. She's really, really smooth from the head to the tail, and a little bit sandpapery from the tail to the head. We kit up, Christina dons a chainmail suit, and I wear a simple wetsuit. I'm assured that I'm perfectly safe in this, and that chainmail is purely for accidental nips, as she is going to be handling the food. Christina prepares the food that we are to take down to the sharks. They certainly know that she's here. The water is choppy, but apparently it's calm underwater, and underneath the boat swims dozens and dozens of Caribbean reef sharks, all waiting to see their long life friend, Christina. Then it's time. I clumsily make my way to the edge of the boat and prepare to jump in. Into the great unknown. I jump in and I look down. I see dozens of sharks all circulating, waiting for us to arrive. Unnerving? Well, I was more worried about my diving gear failing, to be honest, rather than the sharks, as I understand that sharks are not to be feared, but their behavior learned and understood. We head on down, 40 feet, slowly descending into the clear blue Caribbean depths. Finally, we arrive at the shark station and I'm instructed to kneel with my hands together and be still and calm. Christina approaches with the fish and the sharks immediately amass around her. It's incredibly fascinating. I watch as she strokes their skin gently and they respond to her caring touch and approach. They are totally at ease with her. And it's clear to see that these sharks are not ferocious man-eaters to be feared. We just need to learn appropriate behaviour in their environment. We are entering in on their habitat, and we humans should be respectful of this. Christina feeds a few fish to the sharks. I sit patiently and watch. I was feeling very relaxed and calm underneath the water. We didn't need to use hype for this shark shoot like other programs, as our intent here was to show the true nature of sharks, and with us learning the correct behaviour, they would respond appropriately. This would be the same with huge tiger sharks. Knowledge is everything, and Christina was here to show myself and you, the viewers, that sharks are not mindless killers. Like I show you too, that wolves are not either. Christina then starts to calm one of the sharks by gently stroking its head. They come to her for this touch, which shows that even though sharks are very basic and quite predictable to a degree in their behavior, there is also a level underneath that enjoys the feeling of touch. The shark was in a trance-like state and totally happy to stay very still on the sand. Eventually, we managed to calm a shark in front of me, and I gently put my hand out and stroked its beautiful sandpaper-like skin. It was the most amazing feeling in the world. After years of learning wolf behavior, it was time for me to step into Christina's shoes and understand another apex predator. I was keen to learn, as our apex predators need all the help and support we can give them. 
We finally had to say goodbye to the sharks and Christina retreated away with the food source into the depths like a mystical water creature. All and all, a very successful shoot for Animal Watch. I arrived back at the surface, soggy but ecstatic at my incredible experience that very few people get to have. Well, that was absolutely amazing. I've never known anything like it in all my life to actually see so many reef sharks surrounding Christina all in one go. The way we judge these sharks, we think they're like mindless killers. They were very mindful of me when I was kneeling down there. I knew they all understood where I was. They checked me out. I'm not a food source. I'm not even carrying food. They, they knew exactly who the person was who was carrying the food was Christina, but, but not just that, they come for her for comfort and affection. Finally, we sailed back to land so I could sit down with Christina and properly talk about shark behavior and conservation. I've always been drawn to the ocean thanks to uh, my family. My dad always taught me that there are no monsters in the oceans, only the one that we create in our heads. So he always taught me that animals are animals. Uh, growing up in the Congo with my family, I learned from the people from there that even the snakes and the scorpions are just animals. You just need to understand what moves them, what triggers them, and how to be out of their way. So the Caribbean reef sharks are the sharks that I work with. Their average size on the dive is between three feet to about eight feet. Some of the biggest go in about seven, eight feet. The biggest ever recorded was 9.6 feet. I call them the cleaners. They're pretty localized. They're not big transient sharks. They're not big migratory sharks. And they actually are very much designed to eat the fish that is dying or is injured or is decaying. So they're very important for the health of the reef itself. They have ways of communicating with each other. And I do believe they have ways of communicating with us through their body language, or through their movements, or through their fins, through their reaction, their different reaction day to day. It's just up to us to take the time and sit there and listen. The media use expressions that I'm totally against, like shark infested waters or a vicious attack. Waters are not infested. Sharks live in the waters. An attack is not vicious, it's an encounter between an animal and another creature that has entered that animal kingdom. And at the end of the day, if we really compare the amount of people that go in the water uh, with the amount of shark encounters that we have of the negative kind is absolutely insignificant. The ruthless treatment of these animals from humankind is absolutely atrocious without realizing what really sharks are. For me, one of the biggest lessons I try to teach is when you say shark, everybody literally hears, unfortunately, the jaws sound, right? The smallest shark in the world is the size of a pen. It fits in the palm of a human hand. And the biggest shark in the world is a whale shark and it feeds on plankton. We fail to really recognize the meaning of the word sharks. One of the most tolerant creatures I ever met in my life, way more tolerant than humans. When I'm with the sharks, I'm happy. I'm comfortable, I'm relaxed, I feel safe. I find sharks one of the easiest animals to be with in the wild. We go swimming with many different species of sharks in a way that we couldn't go walking in the savanna with the lions or the crocodiles or, or the hippos by the river. We have a level of closeness with these so perceived vicious animals that we honestly take longer time to achieve with any other animal of similar characteristics out in the wild on land. My behavior is not threatening and it's not painful. If they want to stay, they stay. If they don't want to stay, they go away. And then when they finally decide to come and stay, it's their decision. The hook presence depends on the season of the human presence out in the water. So in the wintertime, we have less hooks, and in the summertime, we have more hooks, because humans are more active. But I've seen quite a lot causing infections, deformities, uh, and I know it's painful because it takes a very long time for a shark that shows up with a hook to come in and want to feed. For me, it's like seeing my dog with a thorn in our paw. I want to remove it. It is a, something that I want to do for the health and benefit of that specific shark because I care about that shark. 
I then have to start training the sharks, condition the sharks and understanding that the food is not going to hurt. Hey, remember, I know the last time it hurt, but this time it's not gonna hurt. Once they start feeding again, then I start removing the hook. And sometimes it comes off very quickly and sometimes it takes dozens of hours. Some hooks have taken up to two, three months. I hope that other people will start understanding that sharks have feelings and that they have a desire to live and survive like all of us that their intentions are not to go around and bite or kill humans, and that they're been put here through a, an amazing production of nature. We need to stop trying to think about my world, my safety, and kind of like, is how do I share this world with everyone else in a, a comfortable and safe manner? Today had been one of the best days of my life. As a lifelong admirer of apex predators, I had been honored to step into one of the greatest shark conservationist shoes for the day and trade land for water and wolf for shark. One thing is for sure, sharks are not to be feared, but their behavior observed and understood. So we can learn to exist alongside them and admire them for the important and vital environmental balances that they are. Just remember that next time you step into the water, you are entering their domain. For us humans to have the arrogance to assume we control both water and land, and must annihilate everything we fear. We are acting in ignorance and violence. Hopefully one day, the world we live in will evolve into a safer place for all animals, including our most feared and most misunderstood top predators. Sharks are persecuted around the globe in their millions annually. Please consider dropping by this website to learn more about their plight and how you can help. Also, please drop by People of the Water, founded by Christina Zanato, a non-profit organization dedicated to changing people's relationship with our aquatic world through exploration, conservation and education. I've had a fantastic day today with Christina <laughs> underneath the water and um, please be sure to give us a massive thumbs up if you enjoyed this episode and subscribe to the channel by clicking the button in the bottom of the corner and if you would like to find out more about these amazing shark experiences with Christina people need to go to what website? www.cristinazenato.com Christina without an H without an H. You heard it there from the lady. And join me every single week where I'll be bringing you more fantastic episodes on animal rescue, conservation, wildlife, and animals from all over the world, basically. Bye for now.